Hello pandas and welcome to the final episode of the How to Make Money Scrapping Metal Starting Kit mini-series. Today I'll go over how I sort and store my scrap metal for recycling, as well as some suggestions for containers and flex spaces depending on what your situation requires. So if you're well on your way to being a scrap master but feeling overwhelmed by your hoard, this may help. So listen, if your stash is getting out of hand, you may be unclear about your scrap goals. I'd like to outline my fundamentals first because it may help clarify your own. Scrap metal is a hobby and a source of income for me. I do it because I enjoy it, but also because it makes me money. What I do not enjoy is tripping over something while I'm trying to get from one end of the room to the other, or getting stressed out because I'm staring at a pile of work in front of me with no time to do it. So a core fundamental for all my scrapping is inventory management. It sounds simple, and it is, but it can be the most difficult part of scrap metal. Everybody who has ever gotten into this hobby has first gotten super into the collection of the material to the point where they have so much piled up that they've yet to process that there's no space to take in anymore. Now you're stuck. You can't make any more money until you fix this problem. And it doesn't matter if you have an entire field or a warehouse or just a little basement closet. You need to manage your inventory so it doesn't clog up your flow rate. All my trash pandas are nodding their heads. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's with that in mind that I have designed my scrap space the way that I have. I've made choices about what to skip, what to store, and what to sell immediately based on how financially justifiable a bin to that material is to me. There is no one size fits all solution though and your storage needs will be different than mine. Your sources will be different than mine, the prices you can get will be different, and maybe you're less focused on rapid turnover and more on extracting as much copper as you can stack up, for an example. And that's fine, but inventory management is still fundamental. Now with that said, let me share how I keep mine. I am still looking for the other posts to that shelf though and that will be a big improvement and I also just brought in a whole bunch of stuff and I'm currently set up to bring in another pile of stuff. So not all these bins are full, but that's that's the thing, it's a con the flow rate, come on. Now we'll start with the absolutely most common one, the aluminum. I've got it hidden over in the corner there and normally I would actually have three bins. So here's a bin with all of these smaller pieces of extruded aluminum. In this bin I've got all of the longer tubes of extruded aluminum and in the bottom I throw the smaller pieces of lower grade just old or painted or whatever aluminum. Typically I would have a large bin probably sitting here or up there. That would be pots and pans and um, possibly aluminum siding um, but siding is one of those things that I prefer to bring in as soon as I get it because it just takes up a lot of space. That said aluminum will likely occupy more space than anything else because that third bin will probably need to be really big so that's aluminum. Now the other one that's going to take up the most space is going to be the wire. That's why I have a large bin for that one. We can circle back to wire though. Let's talk about copper and brass. So copper, I would suggest four bins. I have two here. This one is all of my clean copper tubing. And then down here we have all the number two copper tubing. So this is the stuff that has solder all over it. And this is the stuff that is just old gross looking copper. There's, yes, it doesn't look clean, but there's no other metals in there. So those are the two bins for pipes. And then you'll also want two bins for clean, bare, bright kind of copper wire. One for the number one and one for the number two, which would be grimy or have other contaminants on it. I just brought in all my copper, which you're probably aware of. So that's why these bins don't exist. But copper, four bins. Now, brass. What you see before you is three bins, but I actually have five bins of brass. Let me explain. So this is tap brass. That's clean brass with no other metals on it other than the chrome or nickel plating that's on it. But otherwise, it's free of solder and it's free of steel. Yada, yada, yada. This is clean brass. 
There's nothing on there other than maybe a bit of corrosion and some Teflon tape. But the only metal in there is brass, and it's yellow. This is, I guess, it's brass that has copper soldered onto it. And maybe a few other small contaminants, but for the most part, it is exclusively brass with a bit of copper and solder. Now the other two are ammo brass because some places count that as something different. I like to bring it in in a bag so they have the option. And the dirty brass. There's not much of this, but this is the brass that I just couldn't get all of the steel off of, at least not efficiently. So five bins of brass. And that brings us to the wire. Typically I only have two bins going, but I'm actually about to bring in all of this stuff over here. And that includes two large bins right full of wire. So typically what happens is this is where I'll throw all of my wire that I haven't dealt with yet. And then after I clip all the ends, it goes down in here. So this is where the number two insulated wire builds up. Now, you might need a whole bunch of other bins. Now, this theoretically could take up a lot of space because you could need up to eight, even nine bins just for wire. One for number one insulated, number two insulated, um, BX cable, Lumex cable, Cat5, aluminum wire, Christmas lights, coaxial. You could be overwhelmed by a whole bunch. Um, personally, I like skipping Christmas lights unless they're in season and I'm getting a ton of them. Uh, skipping aluminum wire unless I find a really big piece of it. Lumex, unless it's the paper stuff, I'll typically try and clean it down to number one. And then number one, ideally I'd like to clean it into bare bright. Just depends on how it goes. Either way, wire can take up a lot of space. Truthfully though, I don't usually hang on to anything other than number one and number two for very long because I don't like having that many bins. It's just, that's me. Now, steel. Steel is a big one, at least now. So I have three bins in here. I've got the stainless steel, the prepared steel, and the tin shred. Now really those are just for throwing small stuff in so I don't throw it out instead. The majority of the steel is like up against the side of the the building along with compressors and a bucket for the oil that comes out of the compressors. Just because there's no reason to keep them in here. Now, motors. You'll probably have a bin of motors. They're pretty good. And quite honestly I would consider that the essentials right there. That's pretty much it. But of course, there's gonna be more, and that's what this space is for. This, in my mind, is the flex space, which is important. Right now, it's just piled up with a bunch of stuff that is getting put in the truck and taken in right away. But you would need a space for larger items, things like your rims, your stack of batteries, or maybe some barbecue shells or something like that. Um, cast aluminum, that's the one we left out. That's typically in a barbecue shell. Um, <laughs> You got your, your radiators going on. So you do need a space for larger items because you're never really sure what those are gonna be. Not to mention you'll end up with a bin of a material that you don't typically have all the time. For me right now, it's this um, empty aluminum sheeting because it was really easy to pull the number one out of that stuff because they were short. And this box full of transformers, wall warts, whatever you wanna call those. Typically, I wouldn't save those up, but I might change my mind depending on how I get how much I get for these. And finally, yes, I do have a stash of e-waste. So down there, that's the laptops. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all those yet. And I've got a spot where I put all of my gold containing material. I try not to save up very much of it. Just processors, RAM, um, gold fingers, and the, the tantalum and MLCCs in a bin. I don't have a whole lot of those. Little bag of tantalum, little bag of MLCCs, and uh, hard drives and cell phones. And then up there, a bin of fingerboards and copper aluminum mixed cooling devices. Oh, and of course, my little potion bottle of AP solution, which is 
currently um, very, very blue. And uh, working away, slowly, slowly. Also guarded by a friendly neighborhood spider. I don't really stack up microwaves or TVs either. I have one right now. It's not because they're not worth it. In fact, they're probably worth 6 or $7 each now. But I'd just rather spend my time making videos and hanging out with kids. Yeah, you're going to need some spare bins. Now, when it comes to wire, I really like using stuff like this or moving to a larger one. But uh, these buckets are kind of the gold standard for most people scrapping for a couple reasons. Number one, they can hold a lot of weight, like easily 100, 150 pounds. These handles are stronger than you think, but also because they're really easy to get for free. Restaurants get a ton of these things. This is what relish and mayonnaise and ranch dressing and everything comes in for a restaurant. They got to throw these things out all the time. I guarantee you, you can fill your vehicle with these with no trouble at all, often with the lids. And that's honestly it for me. And I'm looking forward to making it even more condensed after I finally find the parts for <laughs> that shelf. And normally I'd have my tap brass and my yellow brass all in the same bin, but I actually had enough of it to, to test this out. I'll see if, if my buyer uh, even cares or just throws them all in the same bin. And if he does, that's one less bucket of brass I need to have. I also don't have a bin of aluminum breakage, and I try not to keep one because typically when I pick up aluminum breakage, it's something huge, like a like an engine or a transmission or one of those things. So if I do have a bin because it does come up and it is valuable, then it'll just be small things and I'll throw it in the truck as soon as I have something of a decent size. It is worth having. I just try to operate not storing any of it. Now, things I don't collect are uh, brass plugs, like from the end of a power cord, typically transformers, just had a whole pile of them though, um, lighting ballasts, and I'm considering adding circuit boards at least as a test run, because I do have a buyer in town right now, but I don't think the price is very good, but we'll see. And that's the thing with uh, the ballasts and the plugs, and typically transformers, I just don't have a buyer that gives me a very good price on them. I've heard about people making pretty decent money from uh, from ballasts out of fluorescent light figures, fi fixtures, but for me, it's not worth it. I've never gotten good money. I've gotten maybe five or eight cents. I think right now it's 10 cents, and it just takes me a very long time to store any of those up. Same thing with the e-waste. I know y'all out in Ontario and down in the States are making decent money off of that stuff, but I don't, so that's why it's not in my pile. And that's the key point that I'm driving at here. Don't dedicate a bin to CD drives if you only get one or two a year because your time and space are more valuable than the drives are. Well, I hope I managed to make that enjoyable enough for all of my experienced scrappers. If nothing else, it was fun to share how I've got things sorted and I'm definitely looking forward to sharing even more sorted, as soon as I get that stupid shelf. And to uh, people who are brand new at this, um, those are, that's that's my suggestion. But you'll learn one way or another, hopefully before your wife or husband divorces you. In any case, thank you for hanging out and thank you for clicking the like button to support more scrap guides and soon to come scrap adventures. Thanks for leaving it better than you found it. Keep doing the things.